Online dating sucks. Let me just start right there. Um, Y'all seem to think that we want all your money just because we have kids. Uh, we've been doing it on our own for a while. Single moms can do it without you. So you can just go take a giant leap off a short cliff. Today, we're diving into a topic that's been buzzing around. Why some modern women find online dating to be less than ideal. Now, before we jump into it, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell for more insightful content like this. So, I am fine being curvy. Would I rather be a couple sizes smaller? Mm, probably, who doesn't? But I'm good with being curvy. I, I've come to terms with it. It is what it is. Uh, but in the beginning, it was that constant feeling, hmm, should I make sure they read my bio and know that I'm not a size two? Like, I don't know. The insecurity that comes along with meeting random people online when they haven't actually seen you face to face sucks. That's reason number four. All right, let's get real. Online dating, it's like a double-edged sword. While it offers an abundance of choices and opportunities to meet new people, it also comes with its fair share of challenges and insecurities especially for women. So, what's the deal? Why do many women feel like online dating sucks? Let's break it down. Women often find themselves judged solely on their appearance or how well they fit into certain stereotypes perpetuated by society. This can lead to feelings of inadequacy and self-doubt, making the whole experience less enjoyable. Listen, it's hard to truly get to know someone through a screen, and many women find themselves wading through shallow conversations and superficial interactions. Without that spark of chemistry or shared interests, it's easy to feel like online dating is just a never-ending cycle of disappointment. Meeting up with someone you've only interacted with online can be nerve-wracking, to say the least. Pathetic. There's always the risk of encountering catfishers, creeps, or even dangerous individuals. It's no wonder many women feel apprehensive about putting themselves out there in this way. With so many profiles to sift through and decisions to make, it's easy to feel paralyzed by choice. This can lead to decision fatigue and a sense of dissatisfaction as women struggle to find someone who truly stands out from the crowd. But here's the kicker, that's not to say online dating is all bad. For some, it's a great way to meet new people and potentially find love. It's all about finding what works best for you and navigating the ups and downs of the dating world with confidence and self-assurance. What if you're talking to somebody online and you never actually meet them? This is low-key the worst. You know why? If you're talking to somebody online and you build up this intense connection, but you don't actually meet, you have two problems. The first problem is you have no guarantee that it's actually going to go well once you do see each other because you feel like you know this person really well, but it can be the case that the physical connection is completely different than what you have over the phone because it is different. Speechless conversation is very important. I'm talking about just gestures, talking about face expressions, talking about seeing how the person interacts in the outside world. All of that matters and all of that leads you to know a person really well and to truly know a person, like actually know them. Number two is the factor of loyalty. So you're talking to this person that's not actually part of your day-to-day -day life in the sense of you interact with them physically, but you are loyal to them. You are loyal to this person. You know you have this person somewhere Somewhere in the world. By the way, if you're dating someone from a different country, it's just all the more enticing because in the beginning you're like, ah, oh, this is so cute. You know, we can do so many cute things. We can like write letters, whatever, yada, yada. And then eventually it just becomes really frustrating. <laughs> you have no idea whether that potential is going to pay off. And also, you know so many things about them that you should know. You know their family dynamics, you know their friends, you know all these things about their life, but you're not actually part of it. You know that feeling when you've been chatting with someone online and you finally decide to meet up in person? Yeah, it can be nerve-wracking. But why is it that modern women often feel like it's not a guarantee that it's going to go well? Sure, you might have had some great conversations online, but it's not the same as meeting face-to-face. -face. There's a lot you can't gauge from texts or video calls, like body language, chemistry, or even basic mannerisms. Listen. When you've been building up a connection with someone online, there's always the risk that reality won't live up to your expectations. Maybe the chemistry isn't there, or perhaps they're not who they portrayed themselves to be. 
It's a tough pill to swallow, and many women worry about facing that kind of disappointment. Women are often taught to be cautious when it comes to meeting strangers, and for good reason. There's always the risk of encountering someone who's not who they claim to be or who might have malicious intentions. It's no wonder many women approach these situations with a healthy dose of skepticism. When you're meeting someone for the first time, there's often a desire to put your best foot forward and make a good impression. But that pressure can be overwhelming, leading to feelings of insecurity and self-doubt. It's like being on a first date amplified by 10. Pathetic. But hey, that's not to say it's all doom and gloom. Sometimes taking that leap of faith can lead to wonderful connections and new experiences. It's all about finding that balance between caution and optimism. Online dating has its perks, but there's one aspect that can make it particularly challenging for modern women, and that's the issue of loyalty. So, why do many women feel like the loyalty factor makes online dating suck? With so many potential matches at their fingertips, some people find it difficult to commit to just one person. It's like being a kid in a candy store. Why settle for one flavor when you can sample them all? This lack of commitment can leave women feeling disposable and undervalued. When you're constantly exposed to new and exciting people, it's easy to become disillusioned with your current relationship or potential partner. The grass always seems greener on the other side, leading to feelings of dissatisfaction and uncertainty. Listen, in the world of online dating, it's all too common for people to disappear without a trace or suddenly lose interest without explanation. This lack of communication and accountability can be incredibly hurtful and frustrating, leaving women feeling like they can't trust anyone they meet online. Unfortunately, not everyone on dating apps is who they claim to be. From fake profiles to exaggerated photos and misleading information, women have to navigate a minefield of dishonesty and deceit. It's enough to make anyone wary of putting themselves out there in the online dating world. So I went on a date with this guy and... You know, it's a first date, so it's like, keep it light. We don't, you know, I just don't like when people try to future plan. Like, let's see if this is the vibe. But he said something that really struck me as odd, and uh, not something I want to venture into, but basically the gist of it was, he wants to get to a place in a relationship where he feels like if he needs to go through someone's phone, or they need to go through his phone to feel comfortable, like, that's good and okay and I was like I understand the intent with that you're basically saying like you're transparent or whatever but in my years of dating I've never wanted to go through someone's phone that's that's kind of not from a good place I don't think that's a positive thing that you feel that you need to go through their phone and he's like well don't you ever get you know everything's going great but you have a feeling and I'm like yeah that's your gut you need to be listening to your gut. If your gut is gutting, you don't need to go searching for it because it's probably something's wrong, you know? And I don't think that having openness of going through each other's phones is healthy nor anything I ever desire or want. And there's things in group text messages and whatever. There's just, they don't need to know that. It's none of whoever I'm dating's business. And yeah, so work on yourself so you don't feel like you need to go through someone's phone to have peace and contentment in a relationship. Picture this. You're on a date with someone you met online and suddenly they ask to go through your phone. Sound familiar? Yeah, it's a scenario that many modern women find uncomfortable. But why do they feel this way and how does it contribute to the woes of online dating? Let me tell you this. Your phone is a personal space where you store photos, messages, and other sensitive information. When someone asks to go through your phone, it can feel like they're crossing a boundary and intruding into your personal life without permission. It's a major red flag for many women. When someone insists on going through your phone, it sends the message that they don't trust you and are suspicious of your intentions. This lack of trust can be a major turnoff and sow seeds of doubt about the relationship. It's a way for one person to exert power over the other and dictate the terms of the relationship. For many women, this kind of behavior is a major deal-breaker and indicative of deeper issues in the relationship. Listen, everyone has the right to privacy and autonomy in their relationships, and this kind of behavior undermines that fundamental principle. It can erode trust and damage the foundation of the relationship. That's not to say that all hope is lost. 
pathetic. With open communication, mutual respect, and a healthy dose of trust, it's still possible to navigate the murky waters of online dating and find meaningful connections. So I matched with this really beautiful guy on Bumble, right? And like he is 5'10 and I'm 5'9, so one good chiropractic adjustment and he's calling me daddy. But that's not really the point. Before I was going to ask him my standard question of what's a conspiracy theory you believe in, he sent me a question prompt. So I had to ask him a question about what he wanted me to ask him about. He was like, ask me about my family. And I was like, fine. Do you have any siblings? And he responded, one, but we can make more. Not only was that not math or science, but it was also not history or knowledge. And I could have been mean, but I wasn't. I was nice. I responded six out of ten. Points for creativity. I could have said two out of ten you disgust me, but I didn't. I was like, what sibling do you have? He was like, a brother. If he had a sister, I would. she would slap him into shape for me. I wouldn't have to do anything. But if he has a brother... Ah, uh, I have a brother. It hasn't made me a better person. I'd be like, why do you even still have Bumble? I have witnessed a 21-year-old man of whom I could theoretically dunk on tell me that together him and I could make him more siblings. Sometimes when I want to feel things, I go on Bumble and it delivers, okay? I was thinking like, oh, how do I tie my messages? Like, what if I sound too eager or something like that? And then he leaves me on red. I was thinking about all the normal things that people think about. And then I remembered like, he's not wearing a pirate shirt. His opinion doesn't matter to me. So I have had two middle-aged ladies stop me on a hike to tell me that I'm beautiful. What do you bring to the table that they don't? Picture this. You've met someone new, and you're really hitting it off. But suddenly, you find yourself holding back, afraid of sounding too eager. Why do modern women feel this way, and why does it matter? In a society where women are often taught to be demure and reserved, expressing too much interest too soon can be seen as a sign of desperation or neediness. Many women worry about scaring off potential partners by appearing too eager. Here's the thing. Modern women value their independence and don't want to appear overly dependent on a romantic partner for validation or happiness. Expressing too much eagerness can be perceived as relinquishing control and surrendering to someone else's opinions and desires. Being too open and vulnerable too soon can leave you susceptible to disappointment if the feelings aren't reciprocated. It's a way of guarding your heart and preserving your emotional well-being. Modern women are often hesitant to sound too eager because they want to gauge the other person's interest first. They don't want to invest too much emotional energy into someone who may not be equally invested in return. It's a way of testing the waters and ensuring that both parties are on the same page. Listen, that's not to say that expressing interest is a bad thing. It's all about finding the right balance and being true to yourself in the process.